In this episode, we're going to look at how to configure the initial router settings. I'll show you how to do it and have a discussion of the concepts along the way. In this activity, we'll perform basic router configuration tasks. We will secure access to the CLI and console port using encrypted and plain text passwords. We'll also configure messages for users who are logging into the router. These banners warn unauthorized users that access is prohibited. Finally, we'll verify and save our running configuration. Greetings to all my tech heads out there in the Kev Techify Nation. And if you're new here, welcome. This episode is part of my series on configuration examples for the CCNA. I'm Kevin here at Kev Techify. Let's get this adventure started. Configure the initial router settings. Here I have the lab loaded up, ready to go. On the left side, once again, I have the actual packet tracer file open. It has the PC, has the router in there. That's where we're gonna do our configuration. On the right side is our packet tracer activities window. On the, on the bottom right, we have the original packet tracer window. I use that to go and check my results because that way I can see what's done, what's not. In the upper right, I have the Word document in there that allows me to go and enter in my answer. So I have actually all of this open at one time on my screen. Here we go. Here's our objectives. We're gonna verify the default router configs, configure and verify the initial configurations. What we're gonna do and then save our running config. Part one, verify the default router config. Okay, first thing we need to do is get a console connection to R1. Here's a console cable that down here in our packet tracer window in the bottom left, we wanna connect, click on the connections symbol. That's the orange lightning bolt. It's actually a yellow lightning bolt with a red outline. Go ahead and click on that. And then we need the console cable. As I mouse over it, notice down below the types of cables, those are changing. So what we need here is the console cable. That's the light blue angled one. Go ahead and click on that. Click on PC A and select the RS-232. That's the type of connection we're gonna to connect to. And then connect on R1. R1, we wanna connect into the console connection. Once we have those connected, notice we have our connections. We have our black circles there signifying we do have that connection. Now we go ahead and click on PC A Bring that over, I make the window a little bit bigger. We are on the desktop tab, go ahead and click terminal at this point in time, go ahead and click okay, and hit enter. We are in our device. Step two, access our router in the privilege exec mode, enter the command to get into privilege exec mode. Well, first we have to answer this question, do you want to get into initial configuration dialog? No, we do not. If you get that question, go ahead and type no and O and hit enter. Press return to get started. I go ahead and hit enter. Brings us to the prompt here of router with a greater than symbol. Now we can go on to step 2A, enter into privilege exec mode. Go ahead and type enable to take us from user exec mode into privilege. Once again, notice how our prompt changed right here. We went from the greater than sign to the pound sign. Enter the show running config command, and we can see all sorts of information as it comes up. This is what how, how the device is configured right now. This is the settings that are in RAM. So show space running dash config. Go ahead and enter in. Notice we have the more sign at the bottom. We have the more sign, meaning there's more information to be displayed. You can hit enter, takes you down one line at a time, or you can go ahead and hit the space bar. Takes you down through all the devices. What I normally do is I hit the space bar several times, takes me down to the end of the information, and then I can scroll back up. And notice we have all of our information there. Now we can go back and enter, ask the, or sorry, answer the questions. First question, what's our router's host name? If we look up here, this is where we entered in the show running config. We start reading through here. We have version, we have some no service commands. Right here is we have host, host name router. So we can go ahead and type in router here for our host name. Next question, 
how many fast ethernets does the router have? Well, looking here, we can once again scroll up and down. Right now, I'm just using the, the scroll wheel. I can go up and down. I'm looking for fast ethernet connections. Now, what we have to do is look and look and look right here. Notice right here it says we have fast ethernet. We have one, we have two, we have three, we have four fast ethernet connections. So our answer there is four. Next question, how many, how many gigabit ethernet interfaces does the router have? I would go back up to the start where we typed in show running config again. Look through here, look through here, looking for information. Right here, oh, right here is some gigabit ethernet 00, gigabit ethernet 01. We have a total of two gigabit ethernet. How many serial interfaces? Well, if we keep looking down here, right here, we have serial 000, and we have serial 001. We have two serial interfaces. There we go. What is the range of values shown for the VTY lines? Once again, our VTY lines is, is our Telnet, is our SSH connections. Those are listed down here at the bottom of our show running config. Right here, we have line con zero, line, line auxiliary. We're looking for line VTY, and then what's our range? Zero to four. So there's five total interfaces. Once again, we start with zero. So our range is zero space four. That's our range. Display the current contents of the NVRAM. In order to do that, what we're going to do is type in show space startup dash config. Now that's the file. When the device turns on, it's going to get loaded into memory. It's going to, those are the configurations we're going to have. So now if we do a show startup config, we're going to have that. And it says it's not present. Why does the router respond with the startup config is not present message? Well, it, it, it's there because it NVRAM, we haven't saved it yet. There was nothing to load up. Once again, remember when we first connected into this device, it said, do you want to go into initial configuration mode? And we answered no there. If there was actually a startup config that was saved, we went and got that question and would have went and loaded up that information. And so it displays this message. Was a configuration file was not saved to NVRAM. Currently, it is only located in RAM. The only configurations there is what we have in RAM. It's not saved until we go ahead and put it in there. I hope you're liking this episode on practical configuration examples. Leave a comment on what you think about these configuration examples. If you still have a question or comment, please let me know below. You can also visit my website at kevtechify.com for all of my details and how to get these episodes in video and podcast form. On to part two. Configure and verify the initial router configurations. Configure the initial settings on R1. If you have difficulty remembering these commands, refer to the content for this, for this topic, going back into our reading and doing this. I'm going to walk us through right now, but if you're still having problems with it, I would highly suggest going and writing this information down. First thing that they want us to do is... It... Enter several times to give us some clear working area. They want us to configure R1 as the host name. So right now we are currently in privilege exec mode. We need to go into global configuration mode. That's where we can go and type configure T, configure terminal. Got to spell configure, right? Notice once again, our prompt stays. 
it still has the pound sign, the hashtag, meaning we are in privileged exec mode, but we've also went into global configuration mode, sort of a, a, a sub mode of that. And that's what it's saying right here in this parentheses. We are in that mode. Now to change the host name, type in host name and then put a space and whatever you put in there is going to be the host name. The exercise asks us to enter in R1 as our host name. If you notice down here in our packet tracer window, we are now at completion of 30%. That's we can check and see how we're doing. We can also check results right here. If we if I clicked on check results, we come over here, we go to assessment items, we notice we are getting checks here on different things. And so setting up our host name. Configure the message of the day. If we look in here, message of the day is another item we have to go. So just continue working through this and by the time we're done, we should have 100% here. Configure message of the day text, unauthorized access is strictly prohibited. This is the same commands that we used on a switch. So once again, I'm gonna go ahead, open up PCA, open up my terminal window, take the default, so we're connected back in here. So banner, M-O-T-D, we have our marker. What do we want it to say? We want it to say unauthorized access is strictly prohibited. And notice I am starting with a dollar sign and I'm ending with a dollar sign. You have to have your delimiters in there and the delimiters can be and basically any character you don't normally use a lot. You can think of it sort of as the shift in the number keys. Now, if you want to include one of those symbols in your message, don't use that as your delimiters, use a different one, but go ahead and enter. And once again, watch your completion go up here. We went up to 40%. Encrypt all plain text passwords. Remember how to do that? That was pat or sorry, service password encryption. I used the tab to complete that. Go ahead and complete that. Notice our completion is up to 50%. Use the following as our passwords. Use the privilege exec mode unencrypted password as Cisco. So that starts off with enable. And then put a space and a question mark in there. We can e either use password or secret. Password assign the privilege level password. Assign secret is assign the privilege level secret. Difference here is if I use password right now, that's going to be unencrypted. If I use secret, it's going to encrypt it. Right now they're asking us to do the unencrypted. So we go in and type in password and then we actually put a space in there and then what we want it to be, we want it to be Cisco at this point. On the part two, privilege exec encrypted password. This is enable. And now we want to use secret in here that will encrypt our password. And then what we want it, it set as it It's a secret. There we go. Now understand that it's it's enable and then either password for a clear password or secret for an encrypted password and then you put a space and then you put what your password actually is. Next thing they want us to do is set up the console password from our global configuration mode. The command here is line con and there's only one console connection so we just, the number we put there is zero because the device counts, starts counting with one at zero. And so all we do is put that in there. Now we go ahead and we set our password. Password is let me in. We set the password. Now we need to tell the login process to actually use this password. And all we have to do is simply type login at this point in time. And then there we go. 
Now we're going to verify our configurations at this point in time. Verify the initial configurations by viewing the configuration for R1. What command do you use? Well, this would be, you want to see what's in RAM. You want to see what the running configuration is. So it's a show running command. We don't do it from global configuration mode, but we do do it from privilege exec mode. I need to back out a layer. So I type in exit and notice how my prompt has changed. Now we went from configuring a line down to global configuration. And now type in exit one more time, takes us to privilege exec mode. And it gives us a system update. I just hit enter a couple of times and I type in show running. Dash config. And here we can see we've, we've set up some stuff. I had space bar all the way down up at the top. We can see we did our enable secret password. We did our enable password. But because we did service pass password encryption, clear text password has been encrypted also. Coming down to the bottom here, looking at our line console, we can see that we did set our password. Normally that password is in clear text, but because we did service password encryption, it has been encrypted. Exit the current console session until you see the following message. Let's continue typing exit. There it is. There's our message. R1 console zero is now available. Press return to get started. Go ahead and enter. We have our banner message of the day. Unauthorized access is strictly prohibited. Question. Why should every router have a banner message of the day? Well, this is mainly for a uh, security reason to warn unauthorized users not to be there. You can also send messages to network personnel or doing or for why is they're working on their systems and stuff like that, but it's mainly to prevent unauthorized access. Question every, or answer every other should have a banner to warn on authorized users that access is prohibited MOTD which stands for message of the day banners and also used you send messages to net personnel such as pending system shutdowns or who to contact or access. Here we go. If you are not prompted for a password before reaching the user exec mode, what console line did you forget to configure? If you weren't prompt for it, even though you set a password and you weren't prompt for it, you forgot to put in that login to tell the login process to use it. And so the mode you're in, we have R1 config. Once again, we are in our line at this point in time. Pound sign for our privilege exec mode. And the command you forgot to put in to tell to use that password for the login process is simply login. Enter the passwords necessary to return to privilege exec mode. Okay. First one here was let me in. I think I typed it wrong. Let me in. There we go. And then to get in privilege exec mode, we have to go ahead and type enable. 
And then the password there was Cisco. Oh, we can't use Cisco because we did put in the secret one. The secret one, the secret one overrides it. The secret one was it's a secret. And there we go. We are in there. Why would the enable secret password allow access to the privilege exec mode and the enable password no longer be valid? Well, like I just said here, the enable secret password overrides the enable password. And then if, if both of them are set, yeah, you're going to have to enter in the enable secret password to get into the enter privilege. You're going to have to enter in the enable secret password to get into the privilege exec mode. Clean up here. If you can figure any more passwords on the router, are they going to display in configuration file as plain text or encrypted text? Remember, we went back in and we entered in the service password encryption command. That is going to set all clear, clear text passwords that are set in the file, and they're going to go ahead and encrypt them. So right now, they're going to be encrypted. So the passwords will be encrypted because we use the service password dash encryption Into part three, saving the configuration mode. You've configured the initial settings on R1. Now back up the running config file to NVRAM, non volatile RAM. So if we turn off our device or if we reboot it, those settings will be there to ensure the changes are not lost if the system's rebooter loses power. What command did you enter to save the configuration mode? Here, the command. To copy it from our running config into our startup config. To copy our RAM into that NVRAM command is, is a copy command. So it's C-O-P-Y space. And then where are we copying from? We're copying from our RAM, which is called running dash config. And where are we putting it? We're going to store that in our NVRAM as our startup configuration file. And so where we're going to put it is start up dash and big one little change i want to make right here word automatically capitalizes it it should be a lowercase c it will give you a problem in your configurations what's the shortest version of this command now the command down here was copy running dash config into our startup 
and I use tab completion to get that in there. That was our full command. They're going to ask, are, are you sure you want to do it? Go ahead. But what is the shortest? If I type in COP, if I type in CO to start with, and I hit question mark without a space, there's three possible matches. So I have to try COP and then question mark. Oops. COP, then a question mark, and notice the only copy matches. Once it becomes a unique word it matches, you don't have to type anymore. Then we're on to getting our part from RAM, the running config. Now, if I put a space and a question mark in there, it's going to list out all the options it's looking for. And if you look here, it is only looking for, there's only one word that starts with R. So we could go and just put an R in there, put in a space and then put another question mark. And we want to copy it to our startup config. Now notice we do have two commands here that start with S, but then the second letter is a C and a T. So if I just put in the ST right here, that is the shortest possible version of this command. Notice we do get the, you want to save the file as the startup-config file? Yes, we do. So hit a Y, hit enter. And there we go. We have got that saved out. On to step two, the optional part, we're going to go ahead and do that. Save the startup configuration file to flash. Normally, the configuration file is saved to NVRAM. We're going to save it to flash. It's a different type of memory, different area inside of our router. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to examine our flash first here. First command we're going to type in here is show flash. When we do a show flash, it's going to list out all the files that are in, in memory. Right here, we have one, two, three files. How many files are currently in flash? We have three of those files. Which of these files would you guess would be the iOS? Now, looking here, the other two are like some signature definitions, the last two. This first one here is a much bigger file. That's usually your operating system is the biggest file on there. Following this, this is our naming convention. And the last extension here is a dot bin. That dot bin signifies it's a binary file. And most operating systems are stored in a binary file format. So I would guess that the C1900 universal A9 dash MZ period SPA period 151-4 dot M4 dot bin. That's it. And why do I think it? Once again, it's the file size. And the file has a dot bin as its extension, identifying the file type. This time we're going to copy our startup config file, which is an NVRAM, and we're going to copy it to flash. Basically, we are making a secondary backup of it. We're storing it in a different memory location. We're calling it, um, we're going to call it the same, but you're going to have to go in there. You're going to have to delete it. It's a, just a nice backup once you have a good system, good base configuration there. Our command here is copy space. Then we want startup config. I use tab completion. And then we want to copy it to flash. At that point in time, it's going to say, "Are you? is this the file name you want to copy it to? Just go ahead and hit enter. And it copies it over. Look at that. We'll do the show flash command one more time. And notice we now have four files right here. We have our startup config there. It is now saved as a auxiliary backup. And that is the end of Packet Tracer Lab 10.1.4 configure initial router settings.
It was my pleasure to provide you with this wonderful episode on configuration examples. If you like this episode and you got value out of it, please click that like button, give a five-star rating, leave a comment. This all helps me bring you more great content. Please take a minute to subscribe to my channel. All my socials and contact information are on my website, kevtechify.com. There you can find out how to get all these episodes in video and podcast form. Thank you so much for watching this episode of my series on practical configuration examples for the CCNA. I've created four wonderful playlists for you on the CCNA. These episodes, I go through all the concepts that Cisco calls out for the CCNA. Once again, I'm Kevin. This is Kev Techify. I'll see you next time for another great adventure.